Hey y'all, and welcome back to the character creation course. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to retop the head in Blender. So let's get into it. So if you're not familiar with the concept of retopology, let me just give you a brief overview of the topic. And it's essentially recreating what you have sculpted with a much more optimized edge flow. For example, we have a really high poly dense mesh around the mouth, nose and eyes, but we don't really need that many vertices in those areas to accurately map out those locations. So what we are going to do in this video is just recreate those areas with significantly less polygons and they will be much more optimized optimized with how they're flowing together. That'll make it easier for rigging and animating later on in the course. So there are two additional things that you should really keep in mind as we're doing retopology. So the first is that you want to be as low poly as possible. Don't try to get really dense right off the bat. You want to just try to cover an entire area as much as possible with a single face. And the second is that symmetry is going to be your best friend for retopology, especially with anatomy and faces. And I don't just mean vertical symmetry, which we will cover with a mirror modifier, but also horizontal symmetry and you'll see that as we get into it so without further ado let's get into marking up our mesh to start applying our faces so the first thing that we want to do is map out where we're going to put some edge loops and face loops right from the beginning. So there are a couple of areas that right away we're going to go ahead and just mark up. And these are the eye. So go ahead and draw with the annotation brush and a color of your choice through both the center lines vertically and horizontally. And then come in here and do some diagonal center lines as well. Now they don't have to be perfect lines. These are just going to be general guidelines for what we're working on. Make sure also that your annotation is set to the surface so these lines are attached to the face instead of at the 3D cursor, which is the annotation default. From there, we'll come down to the mouth and just draw a line around the mouth. And then we're going to draw a line through the center line there. And then we will do something like that. So we've got three lines through the mouth and then a horizontal line. We've got our eye kind of mapped out. We'll finish this up with a loop which is going to show us kind of how those edges are going to flow. And then we'll come over to the ear. Now we're gonna do essentially the exact same thing that we did on the eye. So just go ahead and circle it out. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It's just, you know, something to give you a marker for. And then once again, draw your lines. Now, these will all be important later on. So we're just getting these started. Uh, and then there are two more lines that we need to draw. So we need a muzzle line going from roughly here to around to the chin, something like that. That's going to be a face loop. And then we need something to outline the face. So we'll draw from here down to the chin area, and then we'll take this up to somewhere in here with the forehead. Okay, so we have drawn all of our lines and it's actually time to start working on adding our mesh. So to add in our vertices for the face, what we actually wanna do is make sure first that the 3D cursor is at the point of origin for this object. So what we can do is hit Shift C, which will move the 3D cursor back to the world origin. And because of how we've done this tutorial series, that is the exact same point of our head. If it wasn't, we would simply need to do Shift S and then move the cursor to selected. From there, hit Shift A and add in a plane. Then immediately come over to the outliner and call this head retop. And that's gonna let us know the difference between the head sculpted version and the head retop version. From there, hit tab, go into edit mode, X, and then delete all vertices because we are not gonna need those vertices. We just needed an object in the scene. Okay, so then we'll come up here to the eye and we can create geometry out of nothing by simply doing control and right click. We've added two vertices, but they're not actually visible. And the reason they're not visible is that they are not snapped to the surface. So let's adjust some settings here before we go any further and create our topology. Okay, so the first setting that we want to put on is snapping. So come up here to the top where we have our magnet icon, or you can hit shift tab, which will toggle snapping. And then we want to change the snap from increment to face. From there, we want to project individual elements and we want it to be affected by move rotation and scale. And then we'll say snap with the closest. So what that's going to do is that is going to snap the individual vertices that we have selected to the mesh object behind it. So then we can hit G, which will move and we can see these vertices appear on our face. And let's just go ahead and move these kind of down in this area so that the bottom vertex is on the eyelid and the top vertice, which we can then move over is on the circle that we drew. 
From there, we wanna add two modifiers. We wanna add the mirror modifier, so that way it's mirrored across the X axis, which is why we had the object created in the exact same point of our face, so that its X axis is going to be the exact same X axis of the sculpted mesh that we have. And then we want to add in the shrink wrap modifier. Now the shrink wrap modifier is going to allow us to choose a target, which we will then choose the head object. And it's going to make sure that the vertices that we create are snapped to that head. Even if they're slightly below or above the mesh, the shrink wrap modifier will snap it to the head model. And this is really the way that you retop in Blender without any add-ons. And speaking of add-ons, we have one add-on that we need to make sure that we have active. So come up to edit and preferences. And then you'll come over to this add-ons tab here and search for F2. Make sure this F2 add-on is enabled because this add-on will do wonders as we continue and go through retopology. Basically, this add-on allows you to create faces easier when you're retopping. So this is a really important add-on to have, especially if you are not using things like Retopo Flow. Okay, now that those settings are done, it's time to just start retopping. So let's switch over to edge select by hitting the two key on the top of our keyboard, select our edge and then right click with control to create new edges. So control right click, create new edges and then place the vertices so that they align to the lines that we have drawn. All right, and for this last step, just grab both edges and hit F and fill them in. And then we can kind of individually position some of these vertices so that they align up uh, vertically, which it looks like we did a pretty good job of that overall. Okay, and now we can simply remove these annotations here and let's tackle the muzzle and then we'll go over to the eyes. All right, so for this muzzle, what we're gonna do is just select this single edge here, control right click to generate a face. And then what we should know is that we are going to have some poles here. Now a pole is basically a vertice where the mesh changes direction. So for example, right here, right here in this vertice, we have a pole because this face right here is going to come off towards the center line. And then this one, if we hit F, will then come over here. So this face is going this direction, this face is going this direction, and this face loop is coming through here. And it all changes based on this pole right here. Now we are gonna have a couple of poles here. For example, this is also going to be a pole. So we'll take this one on down. And then this one will also be a pole um, when the this face is gonna go out that direction, but we'll get there in a minute. So let's continue down with this muzzle here. We'll take this one down to the line that we drew, then down to here, scale it down just a bit, over to follow the lines of the mouth, and then over once again. Now at this point, we need to turn on clipping for our mirror modifier. And the reason we wanna do that is so that we can just drag and drop these vertices at the center line and we know that both sides of the mesh are going to accurately connect to each other. So there we go. And at this point, we're starting to have some trouble seeing our mesh. So let's go change some of our display options. So come over here to the object properties and then click on the viewport display. Now here, what we can do is a couple of things. We want to click on in front, which will allow us to view our mesh over top of the sculpted mesh. This can get a bit annoying, so you may want to keep this off, but that is up to you. And then we wanna turn on wireframe and all edges. This will be really important later on in the video because we'll add in some edge loops that the shrink wrap modifier will attach to the head, but that we won't be able to see right away. And then this wireframe and all edges will help actually show it. And the final thing that we want to do, which I find really helpful, is turn it random. So what this is going to do is make every object in your scene a different color. And since we are retopping, um, we want the retopped mesh to be different than the uh, sculpted mesh so that we can see exactly what we're working with. And the final thing we wanna do here is make this head unselectable because otherwise we're gonna end up accidentally selecting it quite a bit and that's gonna get really annoying. To do that, just come up here to the outliner where we have the filters tab, turn on the selection restriction toggle which makes it appear here and then just deselect the head and the eyes um, with that restrictions toggle. So now we can't select the head. All right, so now we've done that, it's time to go back over and do the ears. 
So for the ear, we wanna make sure we have nothing selected and go back to vertex select. Then just control right click and control right click and recreate your edges. And then it's basically just go around the things like we did with the eyes. Okay, and from that, we're gonna just tweak this up a little bit. Now, I don't like working around the ear with in front on, so I just turned it off. And then we want to just kind of make sure that these vertices are somewhat symmetrical, which we did with the lines, but we can come in here and tweak it just a little bit better. And I think it'll, it'll make us happier in the long run with the final result. Okay, and from here, we're actually gonna bring this vertex down because what we're going to do is connect this face loop here. So go ahead, select both of these edges and then control right click out. And then we're going to adjust these vertices like that pretty much. And there we go. And now we can turn on in front because we're not working around the ear. From here, let's go ahead and simply create another pole and go down this way around the face. So something like that. And then we'll take it to here. And then we're going to select both of these, hit M and merge at center. Then hit G again so that it snaps to the outside mesh. And this is where the F2 add-on really, really comes in handy. So all we have to do is select this one vertex here and move our cursor to the left and hit F and it generates an entire face for us automatically. And then it also snaps it. So then we do the same thing and snap it to the center line with clipping turned on with the mirror modifier. Okay, so our face is basically outlined at the bottom, but let's take this over to the top. So now we know that this face is gonna match up here. We want to kind of also line it up with the others. So we'll take this one because it's gonna line up with that and then kind of do that all the way around. So we have this one here, scale it up a little bit, take it over here. And then this face is not going to line up, so we need to line up this edge loop. So we'll just add one more and be done with it. And then we can erase these annotation marks around the ear and the muzzle. And there we go. Now we have one last place and then we can just work on filling this in and that's just around the mouth. So for our mouth, you may be tempted to just go all the way up here, but uh, we're actually gonna create two edge loops in here. So just add two, uh, take one a little bit halfway and then the other to the ring that we created. And then what we'll do is go around the face. So we'll take this one and then have this edge go around the mouth, so to here. Scale it down to here, rotate, scale down, and then repeat. So this edge loop right here is going to frame the outside of our mouth. I know, I guess we didn't draw our annotations that great, but then all we have to do is just take it there and to the center. And so we are keeping this vertical and horizontal symmetry with our vertex placements. So this should be pretty good. All right, and then we can go ahead and fill this. And then with this edge selected, we can just hit F and it will fill that automatically thanks to that F2 add-on. And then we can kind of just take this up a little bit further. So we'll create the mesh, scale it down so that the vertices line up. And then use F and work our way through. All right, there we go. So we've got the very basics of our head outlined and it's time to start getting the rest of it done. So we are gonna actually make two face loops. We want this one to go around this direction and this one to go around this direction as well. And then we want these two to come over the top. So something like that. So with that in mind, we'll hit F and then F, kind of bring it over here, drop that vertice down and then select that one, right click and right click to the center. All right, and there we go. And then to bring the other one around, hit F again. Don't worry if your faces are looking a little bit weird, we will come back and adjust them in a moment. And there we go. And then here, let's go ahead and grab these edges and we're just gonna pull them up a little bit higher so that they kind of align with this edge that we had going for us. And then let's also go and just pull these edges over a bit. So that way they're not all uh, scrunched up towards the front 
of the head there. All right, and then for this last step, we just repeat what we did on the sides. All right, and at this point, we've basically got it in place. So let's just go ahead and line these up. So what we'll do is select both of these, hit M and merge them at the center and then snap it to the top of the head and then do the same thing over here. Okay, so there we go. We have the two face loops going down the head and the two going on the side and we are good to go. And then we can just continue this down the back of the head. So just F our way down. Thanks to that F2 modifier, there we go. And then what we're gonna do, just select all three of these edges and we can kind of control right click down here to the bottom and that honestly should be, should be fine. So then we'll come in and add in a loop cut here, move it up, something like that. Make sure all of those vertices are snapped and then do the same thing again and make sure they snap in place. And then we can just connect these and adjust our neck. Now we want this edge to go more downwards. So we want this face loop to go a little bit more down rather than back. So we're just gonna adjust these so that it's going down rather than back at this angle. All right, and the back of our head is good. And so now we can start to fill in some of these additional faces. So we're gonna pull this vertice down here and then we're going to create another pull. So this is going to come down in a direction and then this will follow the base of the chin for us. So here we go, grab here, take it to the bottom of the chin and there we are. All right, so we've started getting that face outlined and let's just finish out the bottom of the neck before we go any further. To do that, what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually start over here and just right click and then we're gonna rotate this and then extrude over to the center. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna limit the number of vertices that are going to come down the front of the head and then we'll fill that in there and we're good and then just kind of fill in these extra faces and we can connect those up which this tells me that this edge loop is too far uh, down so we'll just move this up a bit Okay, and this is not great. So let's go ahead and add in an edge loop here. And shrink wrap modifier is doing something great, which is snapping it to the surface for us. But if you don't wanna look at how it's doing it, we can just go ahead and manually snap these ourselves. Because I think that weird uh, double vertice there is kind of annoying to look at. So, so there we go, we have our neck done and let's go back up and start filling in this face a little bit more. All right, remember earlier in the video, I said that we were going to connect the face loop in this direction. So what we'll do, just grab both of these edges and fill that in. And then with the F2 modifier, we just have to hit F to fill in those three faces there. From there, let's go ahead and hit F, fill in that forehead, and then grab this last one and fill it in. And there we go, the top of our head is basically finished. And now let's work on this cheek section. Okay, to fill in the cheek, all we have to do is just fill in this one edge loop to right here, and then F our way down using that modifier, and there we go. So what we can see now, if we activate loop cut tool, we're not gonna add a loop yet, but we can see that the face loops are changing. This one is going to connect to the corner of the mouth here, and then it's also going down from the eye. And so we filled in the cheek and we are good to go. Now at this point, it's time to start really working on the nose. So we're gonna turn off the in front here and just add a few faces to the nose. So on the nose, come over here, make sure you have nothing selected and add in a new edge. And then we wanna create five faces on the nose. So that's four and there we have five. And then sync them up here. Okay, so at that point we are good to go, but we can go ahead and also just real quick add in an additional edge loop going through the center. That'll be really useful in a bit. And then we can start to 
pull these vertices together a bit more and fill in this area. So we're gonna take this bottom edge loop up a little bit and we can take it up to there and stop for a moment. And then what we need to do is add in an edge loop all the way around the head. So we can go ahead and do that and the modifier is gonna keep it in place for us. But I am going to just kind of clean it up all the way around, bring up that in front again. Because while I rely on that skin modifier, I don't want to rely on seeing doubled edges. So there we go. Okay, and then we can just go ahead and connect up these faces. So we'll select this edge and that edge and fill that in there. And then we can kind of do the same thing going in the next direction. And there we are. So now we can look at this in the in front way. We can move this up a little bit. And then what we'll do is we're gonna take this and go into the nose here. So we can fill that in there. And then we will add in a single edge loop right there, hitting G for those. And we wanna create basically a little cul-de-sac here. So what we'll notice is that the face loop is going to come up around and then down, leaving us this nice little squared in section right here. And we can just kind of fill that in and fill that in, adjust this. And then we'll pull this down here and come around the nose like this. So we have a couple of face loops that we need to worry about. We have this one, which is going to go around the nose. We have this one coming up and going down into the nose. And then we have these, which are just gonna come out and around as well. So now that we've pretty much wrapped out the nose, let's go ahead and draw and finish up this muzzle. So we can go ahead and draw this up here. This is gonna go sort of that way. And then these faces are also then gonna come across. So with that in mind, let's turn back on the in front, fill this in, and then create a face here. Now this is gonna let us create the pole that goes this way. So we can take this all the way over, and there we go. And then we can just fill in this face right here and kind of work our way going this direction. But we notice that there's a difference in the number of vertices between the nose and the mouth. So at this point, let's go ahead and take the time to add in some additional edge loops to kind of smooth this whole thing out. Keeping in mind that we want to make sure that we have perfect symmetry between our vertical and horizontal. So for this part, let's just go ahead and grab our loop cut tool and then make sure our number of cuts is set to one. If you've been following along with the course, we set it to two during the sword belt episode. And then all we have to do is simply click and let the modifiers do their job of snapping it to the surface here. So we're actually doing pretty good around the eye. We do have some double vertices, but so far it's good. And then we can go ahead and do the around the mouth as well. This one there and there. And there we go. And then we wanna come around the ear. And so we already have one here, so we'll map it on the other side. Go to the back, around here. And there we go. We have some pretty good symmetry coming through the mesh now. We do have some of those double vertices because of the shrink wrap modifier, but it'll be okay to work with them for now. So now all we have to do is start filling in the rest of these faces. So go back to the selection tool. We can turn off in front because we're gonna get on the nose and it's gonna get a little hard to follow. And then all we have to do is just fill in the section. Should be fairly straightforward to see how you'd fill this one in. There we go. And then we can kind of move these over a bit because this is ultimately going to line up and attach to down here. But we need to bring this one over as well. So we'll pull this over. And then come up here. And so we know these are going to connect, so we'll connect those. But then this one needs to come up in here. So then we can just grab this edge and select F and move it together. And then we can just reposition these vertices. Something like that should be fine. Okay, then let's add in an edge loop here. Scale that down so that it follows the bridge of our nose. 
and we are basically good to go. So for the inside of the nose, it doesn't matter how the face loops were coming in. What we wanna do is basically start our own little edge rings in here. So just control right click after you've selected and create an inside edge ring and then just go around the rest of it, creating an edge ring. And I suppose for this, we can do the in front. That should be fine. And then we can kind of just hit F and fill our way in with no problems whatsoever. And there we go. So the nose is done. So at this point, there are only two things that we have to do, and those are go to the ear and kind of relax some of these faces so that we don't end up with this giant stretched forehead and instead end up with something more smooth like we have on the top of the head. Now, depending on the ear style that you have, you may or may not want to get really detailed. I don't particularly care to for my model, but you can if that's what you're looking for for yours. So with that in mind, all we have to do is essentially we're going to start here on this edge and then we'll control right click off a new edge and then we'll make this edge go around the outside of our ear. So let's pull this a little bit closer, just kind of adjust these faces so they're a little bit more framing the ear. And then we can start with this face. So just like with before, we wanna make sure that we're lining up our edges. So we have one here. And then this needs to connect. So we're gonna just create one here and merge these at center and then snap them. And then we can connect this edge loop all the way around. And there we go. So now we have our center edge loop and it's pretty good. From here, we wanna to come to the back of the ear. So just grab this single vertex here and hit F, which will create the face in this direction. So we want it to be a little bit of a diamond shaped here. And then what we'll do is we will actually create two edge loops running inside the ear itself. So then we'll create two face loops running around the outside. Um, we can basically just do this one at a time though, and it would be fine. And then because we lined up everything, we should just be able to hit F and go all the way around and have it connect as expected. So that if we were to look at it in front, everything is snapped into place. And then we can just adjust some of these vertices so they line up a bit better. So the inside of the ear, again, it you know, if it's not super detailed for you, it doesn't matter all that much. So we can just rotate. All right, and there we go. The final things that we really need to do is clean up some of this mesh. So at this point, I'm gonna go over to our modifier stack and let's go ahead and just apply our shrink wrap modifier. So now all of our vertices are snapped in place. We know that they're going to stay connected to the head and it's just time to clean up these faces. And the point of this cleanup is to get the faces as square as possible. So like with these edges right up here, go ahead and just click and move these so that we're getting closer to a square um, on both directions. And then we can do the same thing with these, just kind of move them along. And then we can move these back down something like that. And now it's a much smoother transition all the way around. All right, before I get in and do the cleanup, I am just gonna add in an edge loop here. We can snap that there and move it along. And there we go. So that's gonna frame the eye a bit better. So at this point, let's go ahead and add in another shrink wrap modifier and then allow our head to be selectable so that we can choose the head object there. And then let's go over to the sculpting tab. Now, what we're gonna do here is grab the nudge brush and set our strength to roughly a 0.5. And what this is gonna let us do is just move these faces down and they're gonna stay connected. 
And so as we're moving these faces, we can try to get that squared shape overall. And you can see that the faces are coming more and more into view as we bring the squareness of the face back to uh, square. So this is pretty much it. All we're gonna do is just keep, keep on working on this. And you should be good. So this, I'm definitely gonna time lapse and I will see you guys when it's done. So at this point, our face is actually doing pretty good. We can see that there's some slightly dense mesh more around the muzzle, but that's okay. For our intents and purposes, we are finished with this head retop and it's time to apply our shrink wrap modifier. Now to check out how we did, we have the sculpted version on the right there and the modeled version on the left. And if we right click and shade smooth, and turn off our viewport visibility so that we're viewing all the wireframes, we can actually see they're pretty close to each other. If we were then to bake some normal maps and maybe some ambient occlusion, they would be practically identical. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know in the comments below and smash that like button. And if you wanna see more tutorials like this, go ahead and subscribe for a new tutorial coming out every week. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.